Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Masha Chiprazova. I'm part of the Play Partnerships team I'm here in Singapore, and I work with app developers in Southeast Asia and Australia and New Zealand. We're going to cover three main sets of updates today. We'll look at some of the new features on Play Console. Obviously, this, the, the, this is important, and this is the tool that you work with every day. Uh, we're also going to um, share a few updates around building safer apps and growing your business. I think before we do that, we wanted to give you a big thank you. Um, over the last year, your digital experiences helped people learn new skills, stay connected with family, and take a much needed break during truly unprecedented times. So thanks to your flexibility, hard work, and commitment, Google Play has become um, an even more valuable resource for people everywhere in the world. To help you maintain that growth, um, we've been working on more ways to help you build your business. Um, and these are some of the things that we'll cover today. As you know, building a business takes a lot of work. Um, and taking an app off the ground spans across multiple uh, disciplines and requirements. So at Play, we hope to provide you growth tools, best practices and insights, and be a powerful commerce platform for your business. Um, and we're always looking for new ways to give you that added boost. Um, as we develop our products and programs. So what are some of the new things that we're uh, sharing with you today? First and foremost, there is a new set of engagement metrics and benchmarks, which are now available directly in your console. So we've taken the best of our exclusive um, ecosystem data and contextualized it as part of your engagement metrics against your key markets. These are um, our new engagement metrics with benchmark comparison. And this is feedback we've heard from many of you um, that understanding how your app performs versus a set of peers is extremely important. You can find this metrics in the statistics page under compared to peers. And we hope that these metrics will enable you to draw a comparison without having to worry about the size of your user base. They focus on high quality apps um, and exclude smaller underperforming or abandoned apps. I know many of you are already using this and will be actually taking some questions specifically about this change at the end. So please um, share anything that's top of mind for you. The new compare to peer step also contains key monetization metrics to help you determine opportunity to increase um, the number of, for example, users who purchase or to increase the amount they spend with you. Um, monetization is a key focus of, of I know for you and for us when we make those updates. So uh, please stay tuned for more things to come there. Um, also, obviously, um, what, what is currently available overall when we talk about peer benchmarks? Um, so we have 15 new metrics and performance data from up to 250 different peer sets across over 200 countries and territories. Um, we hope that this will enable you to make better decisions faster and in a more efficient way. Uh, moving on, let's talk a little bit about building safer apps. This is something that's extremely important for our users, for our developers, and therefore for Play. And we know that every successful business is built on a solid foundation of user trust. To help you build the trust, we continuously improve our policies to make sure our ecosystem is safe for everyone. Given that our platform and policies are constantly evolving, we also want to make it easier for you to keep up with all the latest requirements. You've asked us for a number of things when it comes to policy. One is a centralized place to see all your policy violations um, and enforcements, more guidance on how to fix a policy issue, um, and also more advanced notice about upcoming policy changes. We've heard you, we've taken this feedback on board, and we've launched a new policy status page uh, within the console. It allows you to manage um, your app compliance issues in one central place. This page shows you if there are any enforcements against your app, rejection, removal, or suspension. Um, and you can also find a copy of the email with the details that's been sent to you about any of those enforcements. You will also see more details about the policy violations. For example, if there is an issue with your store listing, uh, we'll actually point out directly to the specific image or text that needs to be fixed. So we hope this helps you uh, build, build safer apps um, in a more efficient way. We've also added the ability for you to appeal an enforcement directly from the Play Console. Um, again, with the goal of saving your time and making these things more efficient. So um, please check out these new changes um, and let us know if, if, uh, if there is any feedback. 
We also understand that not all policy violations are caused by your code. Uh, sometimes they are coming from a third party SDK. And while SDKs play a critical role in our ecosystem, they can introduce a number of challenges from performance to stability and security. And SDK developers uh, obviously want to help, but they also have little visibility into how and when their SDKs cause instability. And they don't always have scaled ways um, to inform their customers about major updates. That's why we've started to establish direct relationship with uh, some of the leading um, SDKs to help them build better, safer SDKs, and also provide better guidance um, to you developers about SDK choices. Um, we took it a step. Uh, a we took a first step in this journey last year when we launched the closed beta of the Google Play SDK console. We've already onboarded several large SDK providers to the early access program, um, and we plan to expand to more SDK developers. With the new SDK console, the SDK providers can report issues, see usage stats, and gain visibility into crash reporting at the SDK level, which is also something that uh, we've heard as consistent feedback. So to wrap up this, uh, this part and uh, move on to the next one, um, let's take a look at what's happening in the commerce world, uh, or what are some of the announcements um, that we hope will help you grow your business on Play. And as always, a reminder, if you want to learn more about the recent improvements we've made to our commerce platform overall on Play, please check, uh, check out the Grow Your Engagement and Monetization session as well. So first and foremost, uh, we want to continue to help you increase the ability to access customers around the world. Play users today have access to more than 300 local payment methods in over 70 countries. Uh, they also have access to international cards in over 150 countries across the world to, to pay for digital goods and services on Play. In 2020 alone, we've added 34 new local payment methods across 30 markets. Um, big thank you for all of your feedback that you've provided. Um, and some of you have even uh, tested this in, in early days. We have also continued to let launch additional offline forms of payments. Um, and we do so by leveraging the new pending transaction capability in the Play Billing Library. We're expanding cash payments to more countries. Very exciting news. Um, and we're also including support for uh, in-app purchases for, for, for cash payments in more markets. And we're, we're working on launching bank transfer support in select markets. So definitely watch this space and stay tuned for more updates from us on this. Continuing the, um, the Grow Your Business and the Commerce theme, we're also excited to share with you um, a couple of new features. Um, to help you optimize the way you sell, we'll soon be launching what is called multi-quantity purchases. Um, this new feature will enable a seamless user experience when buying multiple items and unlocking new ways for you as a developer to sell um, digital goods and services. Similarly, we're also launching a new multi-line subscription feature, which will enable you to sell multiple products as part of one subscription. You can allow users to add, um, up, remove, upgrade, or downgrade uh, products when subscribing, or at any point in time during the life cycle um, of the subscription. You will also soon be, we will also soon be introducing support for prepaid plans on Google Play. This will allow you to offer users access to your content for a fixed amount of time. Play will notify the users um, when their access for, to the content is about to expire so that they're um, able to purchase it again or maybe consider another in-app uh, in purchase. Prepaid plans will be supported by existing functionalities such as real-time developer notification and the subscription API. Excited for some of you to test it, uh, so please uh, let us know if this uh, sounds interesting. Uh, to wrap up on the Play Billing Library news, we also want to make, call out that to take full advantage of these features um, and the rest of the monetization features um, that Play has to offer, we're announcing Play Billing Library 4.0. Um, so please um, take a look at some of these updates. Um, there's also There are also important updates about migrating from um, AIDL uh, and Play Billing Library 1 and 2. We've created some guides and resources to help you um, if, you're, if you still haven't migrated. So please um, check out uh, the link on the screen. 
Another important update and something um, we hope most of you already know, starting July 1st this year, we will be reducing the service fee for digital goods and services sold with Play to 15% for the first 1 million US dollars in revenue earned each year, um, which means you, know, you can uh, use the savings uh, by in different ways, uh, maybe scale up a critical phase um, of your development and hire more engineers, maybe invest in marketing or expanding to new markets. Um, the choice is obviously yours. Um, and we're um, happy to share to share this news. And we know that some developers operate multiple accounts uh, within their app portfolio. So please note that the service fee discount will apply to developers' total earnings uh, for the year across all of the accounts um, that they use to publish the apps. Um, there's more details as well on the link that you're seeing on the screen. Um, so we're going to ask for your help uh, to better understand which accounts you manage. Um, you'll be able to update this uh, shortly in your console as well. PlayCommerce also offers two exciting programs um, to help you engage and retain your users. Just over a year ago, we launched Google Play Pass. Um, it's another way to complement your monetization strategy and give users access to hundreds of great apps and games without ads or in-app purchases. Uh, Play Pass has seen, since expanded to over 40 markets with more than 800 games and apps. And most importantly, developers have on average more than double their Play revenue across participating markets. Um, while Play Pass is currently an invitation-only program, we're always looking for great new content. Um, and you can learn more and express interest also on the link on the slide. Uh, similarly, in 2018, we launched Google Play Points um, as a program to help you increase engagement with your games and apps. It's free for users to join, um, and members earn uh, points on almost everything they buy on Google Play, and then they can use it uh, in exchange for exclusive deals or items um, in, in, in your game. Uh, we're also excited to announce that uh, we'll be launching developer-initiated points campaign uh, campaigns, um, and they will also be available to you directly from within the console. Thank you for staying tuned to hear uh, all of these updates and making it uh, all the way to this part of today's session. 